Today is the 12th lecture on Riemann integration and today is the conclusive one of the entire series so far. So far, we have seen Riemann mathematizing the concept of finding the area practiced by the engineers for a very long period of time in the history. But his works were not mathematically elegant or easy for further investigations. That is where Darbo came in. He tried to simplify Riemann's job with his idea. In this process, we have come up with two definitions of integrable functions, one by Riemann and the other by Darbo. In the last couple of lectures, we have developed enough machinery to prove the equivalence of these two definitions. And today, we are going to give everything a satisfying finish. This proof of equivalence of these two definitions has motivated us in the last few classes. When today we are doing it finally, we do not require any more motivations. Hence, we expect a fairly technical round of arguments today. So please pay your attention. Okay, so uh, we start with the two definitions, recollecting the two definitions at first. So Riemann said the definition of an integrable function as it is integrable if we find a real number AF, which is actually the area, such that for all epsilon positive, we find a delta such that for all tagged partitions with norm less than delta, the Riemann sum with respect to the tagged partition of the function AF is epsilon close to the number AF where the Riemann sum is P bar F is defined as this one. Now, Darbo simplified this uh, function is integral if and only if lower integral is equal to upper integral. And Darbo worked with bounded functions because after Riemann gave his definition, we have seen that a function has to be bounded in order to be in Riemann integral, integrable in the Riemann sense. So since Darbo was basically simplifying Riemann's idea, so he did not have to work with unbounded functions, so he started with bounded functions. So this has been our definition, so we will show that this definition implies this, and this definition implies this. So these are two theorems which are going to, we are going to see today. First one, a fun bounded function is integrable in the sense of Darbo, then it is also integrable in the sense of Riemann. Also, the two integrals agree. What do I mean by two integrals agree? This one. Lower integral is equal to the upper integral, so that is equal to the common value of the integral. That is what we have defined as the integral of f, in case of it is integrable in the sense of Darbo. And the integration of f in the sense of Riemann is this area af. When I say that these two integrals agree, I mean integration a to b of the function f taken in the sense of Darbo is same as this af taken in the sense of Riemann. So let's say the proof. Let f be bounded and, so this is the definition of Darbo, lower integral is equal to the upper integral, integral and we are calling the common value as the, this integration, a to b is fine. We need to show that the Riemann's definition is true. That is, for all epsilon positive, there exists a delta such that for all tagged partition with norm less than delta, we will have the Riemann sum will be epsilon close to this uh, integral of f taken in the sense of Darbo. This is your AF. Okay, if we can show this, then this this thing will guarantee both these two conclusions that it is integrable in the sense of Riemann. Also, the two integrals agree. Where for the tax partition P bar, this is my definition of S P bar F. We start with the tax partition of AB. Fine, any tax partition. Since F is bounded on AB, remember we have assumed that it is integrable in the sense of Darbo. So therefore, F is bounded there. So, since it is bounded in the Rx subinterval xr minus 1 to xr, we have this thing that mr, small mr is smaller than or equal to f at xi r is smaller than or equal to capital mr. So, infimum over the Rx subinterval of the function is less than or equal to any functional value in the Rx subinterval is less than or equal to supremum of the function in the Rx subinterval. So then you multiply with the length of the subinterval to each of the sides over here. Now, if you add them up, this is nothing but the lower sum with respect to P, lower sum of the function F with respect to P. This is SP bar F, this is Riemann sum, and this is the upper sum of F with respect to P. We call this star. Understand one thing. This lower sum and upper sum, they are without the tags, and this is Riemann sum is with the tags. This inequality is true for any choice of tags in the partition P. Now, we have lower sum with respect to any partition P is smaller than or equal to the lower integral. Lower integral is the supremum of all the lower sums. Any particular lower sum will be smaller than or equal to lower integral. Lower integral is smaller than or equal to upper integral. And that is the infimum of the UPS. 
So that inequality is there. But now since AC is integrable in the sense of Darboux, lower integral is equal to the upper integral equal to the integral. So this inequality holds true. So this is my star and this is my double star. Fine. Choose epsilon positive chosen. As AC is integrable in the sense of Darboux, by this corollary that we did the other day, that AC is remain integrable if and only for every epsilon positive there exists a delta such that for every partition with norm less than delta, we have UPF minus LPF is smaller than epsilon. So as AC is integrable in the sense of Darboux, by this that corollary, we get a delta such that for every partition P with norm less than delta, we must have this one UPF minus LPF is smaller than delta. So we are using the necessary part of that theorem. If you remember, I told you that this one is a stronger necessary statement and a weaker sufficient condition. Hence, by these two, the star and double star, we conclude that for any tagged partition with norm P less than delta, we have this thing happening. What, what is happening? You see, the Riemann sum and this integration, they are bounded between the same two quantities, LPF and UPF. So, their difference will be smaller than or equal to the difference between UPF and LPF. The difference between UPF and LPF is smaller than epsilon for any choice of the partition P with norm less than delta. Now, if the partition has got norm less than delta, any choice of tags in the partition P will not hamper the norm of the partition. So therefore, for any tagged partition P bar with norm P bar less than delta, both these inequalities will be true and this one will be true. So therefore, we will have the Riemann sum minus integral A to B of A is smaller than epsilon. And that proves our theorem. So half job done. Darbo implies Riemann. This is done. So next is Riemann implies Darbo. So if A is integrable in the sense of Riemann, then it is integrable in the sense of Darbo. Also, the integrals agree. So F is integrable in the sense of Riemann, so limit as norm P bar tends to zero, the Riemann sum of A with respect to P bar is equal to AF. So let this thing holds true. Choose epsilon arbitrary, fine. So then there exists, so I have just written the definition over here, then there exists a delta positive, so that for any tagged partition P bar with norm P bar less than delta, we have S P bar F minus AF is less than epsilon by 4. Now, at this point I want to make a comment that do not be frightened about this epsilon by 4. I have chosen this one epsilon by 4 after back calculation. Okay, so when you are doing it, you can very well start with epsilon only. Now, so what we need to show, we need to show A F is equal to integral A to B F, where the integration is taken in the sense of Darboux. This is our goal, that A F is equal to integral A to B F, where the integration is taken in, sense, in the sense of Darboux. Now, remember, understand one thing, by writing this A F is equal to integral A to B of F, I also imply that the function is integrable in the sense of Darbo and the integrals agree. Because when the integration is taken in the sense of Darbo, this notation makes sense only when the function is integrable. That is, lower integral is equal to the upper integral. Otherwise, this notation does not make sense in the sense of Darbo. We start with a partition with norm less than delta. What is that delta? So this is this I have chosen epsilon over here. And this epsilon will be the epsilon uh, throughout the sum. And the delta is this delta. The delta we have got from the integrability in the sense of Riemann. So same delta works. The delta which works for Riemann, the same delta works for Darwin. So let P be a partition with norm P less than delta. We are going to show that this P will give us UPF minus LPF is smaller than epsilon. Now, since A is integrable in the sense of Riemann, it is bounded, fine. Since for every R, every subinterval R, MR is the infimum of the function in the RF subinterval and capital MR is the supremum, we have points alpha r and beta r in the subinterval. Now, understand one thing. We need to bring some points of tags over here, some particularly chosen tags. We are going to use the definition of infimum and supremum in each of the subintervals and get some tags in there. How? This way. That this is the infimum in the R subinterval. Infimum is the greatest lower bound. So I have increased that to some more extent. So this cannot be a lower bound anymore. So there must be a point which is smaller than this value. This is coming from the definition of infimum. So alpha R quantities are for the violatory points for the infimum. So epsilon over 4 times B minus A. So B minus A, you will see why have I, have I chosen B minus A. Now this epsilon by 4 is, is to keep it uh, in sync with this epsilon by 4. Okay, so that after A, everything will become epsilon. You can also choose epsilon over here. Okay, but this D minus A you keep, this will be handy later. This is the case for the infimum. This is the case for the supremum. 
this is the least upper bound supremum is the least upper bound this has been reduced further by this amount and this cannot be an upper bound anymore so this must be exceeded by functional value at some point in the rs sub interval we have got two sets of tag one with the alpha points and one with the beta points both alpha r and beta r they are there in your rs sub interval but we are considering the alpha points as one choice and beta points as one choice of tags so denote the tag partition with the alpha points by t uh, sub alpha and with the tags beta points by t sub beta now add them up so if we add them up after multiplying the length of the sub interval to each of the sides so i am adding the first inequality over here for the infimum this side is lpf this is sp alpha f and this is lpf plus f7 by 4 Call this one. Same thing happens with the capital A mark. So UPF minus epsilon by four is less than Riemann sum with respect to P beta tag partition is less than UPF. Now realize this thing that both this P alpha and P beta they have the same norm as P, and P has norm less than delta. So both of them has got norm less than delta. Hence star holds for both the tag partition P alpha and P beta. What is star? The uh, Riemann sum with respect to those tag partitions. Will be epsilon by four close to A F. This is your star. So we are working under this hypothesis, and we have got partitions which are norm smaller than delta. So that is why they will be well behaved like this. So S P alpha F minus A F. The distance will be smaller than epsilon by four. Also S P beta F minus A F. The distance will be smaller than epsilon by four. In that case, what we get? So if we break these two things, these two inequalities, so we get A F minus epsilon by four. This is this S P alpha F. Less than a f plus epsilon by four, and same thing happens for s p beta f as well. Then from one and two, one and two means these two inequalities. What we get is a f minus epsilon by four less than s p alpha f, and s p alpha f is smaller than l p f plus epsilon by four. So I'm combining these two inequalities, this inequality and this inequality. Okay, I'm taking the left hand side from this inequality and right hand side from this inequality. So a f minus epsilon by four. The thing is, P alpha F is less than L P F plus epsilon by four, and I'm doing doing the other way down for the other one. So I'm taking the U P F from this one from two, and the rest of the part from here. So now, if you remove this part, then you get A F minus epsilon by four is less than L P F plus epsilon by four. Now you pass this epsilon by four to this side. So this this is A F minus epsilon by four minus epsilon by four. So this is A F minus epsilon by two. So A F minus epsilon by two is less than L P F. So that is what we get from this inequality. So A F minus L epsilon by two is smaller than L P F. From here we get do the same thing and get if you if you pass this epsilon by four to this side, so it will be A F plus epsilon by four plus epsilon by four. That is A F plus epsilon by two. So U P F will be smaller than A F plus epsilon by two. So U P F is smaller than A F plus epsilon by two. And this is this always happens that right? LPF for any partition LPF is smaller than UPF. Now AF minus epsilon by two and AF plus epsilon by two. So the total distance of these two bounds is epsilon. So that means since these two are intermediate points in the in that interval, so their difference must be smaller than the entire interval. So UPF minus LPF is smaller than epsilon. Therefore, by this theorem, I mean we could have used any of the theorems. This one that it is remaining feasible for a one partition UPF minus LPF is smaller than epsilon. That one partition is the one particular partition with norm smaller than delta. And by the choice, you know this is this could could have been taken as any arbitrary partition with norm norm smaller than delta. So we could have used the other necessary and sufficient that corollary to Darboux theorem that that corollary as well. Therefore, it is integrable in the sense of Darboux. Now what is remaining is to show that a f is equal to the e integration. And that is what also very simple because you can always include the integration with between LPF and UPF. F is integrable in the sense of Darboux for any partition. We have LPF is smaller than or equal to integration is smaller than or equal to UPF. You can always push this integration in between. So therefore, A F minus epsilon by two is strictly smaller than integration, strictly smaller than A F plus epsilon by two. So what will be the distance between this one and A F? Integration on A F has to be smaller than epsilon by two. But both are constant. You see, this is a constant. This is a constant. And they are happening uh, for every epsilon positive. They are smaller than epsilon by two. So there is no other way out but them to be exactly same. This completes the proof.